Hey everybody, and welcome to episode 52 of Estate Planning TV. I'm your host, Christopher Small, and this is the internet's most passionate show about estate planning. Once again, as always, thank you for being here. I hope you're having a great day, week, month, quarter, year, life, everything. Uh, I'm definitely having a good one. It's been hot here in Seattle as of the time of this recording. It's finally cooling down a little bit, and... Um, Time to make another video here talking to you about some um, revocable trusts. And uh, I think in the last video, I talked about one of the reasons why creating a revocable living trust is good. And that's basically if you love your kids. So if you have kids and you love them and you don't have an estate plan, go check out episode 51 because it's a doozy. All right. But um, and I guess this one also goes goes um, really to kids. It also just goes to um beneficiaries in the future and the reasons that you might want to um, create a trust but one of the so this is trust reason number two divorce okay right um, I guess what I'll say to start with is what I'm about to tell you doesn't apply if you are the creator of the trust okay so if you and your spouse come in and you create a revocable living trust this trust is not going to protect any of the assets unless they are already separate property, which we're getting already too complicated, um, if you get a divorce. So just know that basically at the end of the day, creating the trust itself is not gonna provide uh, really any divorce protection if you are the creator of the trust, okay? Where the protections kick in is after you pass away. So after you and your spouse or, or whoever um, is, is uh, the primary beneficiary of the trust, passes away and the secondary beneficiary steps into place, that is when this would kick in. And the reason for that, a couple of reasons for that is that first, inherited property is not um, treated as community property for divorce purposes, which means um, even if you gave the property to um, someone outright, if they had kept it separate, um, then it would, it would not be harmed by divorce, okay? Potentially. Um, what the trust does though is really ensure that that happens and the way that the reason that that happens is because anything that's um, owned or held in trust is deemed to be owned um, by really the trustee but owned in trust so technically it's not um, owned by the beneficiary okay um, not to get too complicated but that's the short and sweet of it the great thing about having property in trust is that 99.9% .9 of the time, uh, the property that's held in trust for the benefit of the beneficiary is going to be treated not even as their own property and thus won't be divisible in a divorce, won't be attachable in a divorce, and often is not even to be considered as, um, as a factor in the divorce unless sort of some, some weird things happen. And if, if you are that worried about it, by the way, to want to really have a, a true concern about it, this, maybe you've gone through a bad divorce yourself or experienced it in your family in some way or, or in life in some way, then you're just basically gonna wanna come in and talk to me or talk to someone and you can, you can craft your trust so that it has really rock solid, hardcore, 100% divorce protection. But overall, in most cases, um, a revo revocable living trust that you create is going to have uh, divorce protection for your beneficiaries. And this is, it can be an important factor when creating your trust uh, because there's really nothing worse than obviously accumulating some assets, um, wanting to pass them down, wanting to have them used for good and not evil, right? Wanting to create legacy and create opportunity for future generations and maybe just your friends and family, maybe not even future generations. Uh, but then to have that um, opportunity cut in half or taken away uh, because of a relationship that you have no control over and have no power over and maybe can't even foresee in the future, um, that would be really sad and a travesty and in a, in a, in a, um, a lost opportunity when it's so easy to, to, to protect against that situation. Okay, so there it is. Reason number two that you probably want to consider having a revocable living trust. You don't want divorce to, to chew up your assets down the line. Remember, a revo again, to be clear, 
I really want this to be clear because it's important. If you are the creator of a revocable living trust, it is it is highly unlikely that your assets would be protected in a divorce that you put into that trust. All right. If you have questions, need further clarification, leave a comment below. Email me, chris at cmslawfirm.com. Call me, 206-659-1512. I'm the owner of CMS Law Firm. I'm an estate planning attorney. So I would love to talk to you about this and see if I can help you out. All right. In any event, again, hope you're having a great everything. And I will see you again here soon. See ya.